Hey, what's up? This is your girl, Taylor Wilde. Welcome back to Wild On Season 5, the podcast where you get the insider's view of the weird, wild world of wrestling and witchcraft. On Wednesdays, <laughs> today's guest is a soul sister. Like myself, she started wrestling in her early teenage years and for better or for worse, has grown up in the professional wrestling business. She has publicly gone through her challenges, both mentally and physically. Those dark times did not break her. She did crack, but only long enough to let the light in and become the strongest, most radiant version of herself. You may know her as former WWE superstar, a multiple time women's champion, the star of Fighting With My Family, and current AEW superstar, ladies and gentlemen, my friend, my girl, Soraya Beavis. Let's do this thing. I would love it. I mean, I love some Taylor Wilde. I, you would like, I, I remember coming to um, Impact years yeah. and years ago before I got signed to WWE and I came to Impact because I wanted to be there. Yeah. And I, because the women's division would just, they still are, but like you guys were red, red, red hot to the point where like you guys were the ones that were selling out the shows and you know. You were like the first revolution to come through the wrestling world at that time, you know? And so I was like, I remember coming there and then uh, being told that I couldn't try out. And I was really, really bummed. But I remember uh, seeing you and I was just like, man, she's so cool. Like you're like just everything about you. And I always like wanted to meet you. So I was like, I just found it like really random that I was like, what's Taylor Wilde doing these days? And I remember, like, look at, I remember telling you at the signing the other day, I was like, I was just yeah. stalking your social media. And I was like, she's back wrestling again, you know? Like, <laughs> and then I bump into you at the signing. And then I'm just like, holy shit. I was like, it's just timing. It's well, faster. I have to tell you, that was definitely divine timing because I was waiting for my Uber and it was taking too long. So I went to run back in the hotel. And had I not run back in, I wouldn't have crossed paths with you. It was like the best yeah. thing in the world. I was so excited to oh, see you. Best thing. I was like, <laughs> finally, like I've been wanting to meet her for so long. And it just, it made me feel good to be able to, to Same. meet you. Just That's perfect. how I feel. And I met your, your brothers and your, I think your dad was there a few times back in the TNA days. Your family yeah. was always there on the UK tours, but I never got the chance to meet you. And, you know, know. like, I love wrestling, but I love women's wrestling. And I yeah. knew you had started from such a young age and you were really just, you know, getting your footing that, but that, like you said, you were denied a tryout, so. I know, well, yeah. I was 17 at the time and I remember oh. going up to Bully Ray and asking and he pretty much just laughed at me and said, no. Um, I'm gonna be honest, like, I, I feel like it's very public knowledge. I'm not the biggest fan of his anyway. So like, okay. I, I don't blame him for it because I was, you know, I, I'm just saying you're gonna blame him for it in a way where like, I'm not blaming him for not letting me have a trial just because I was so young, I was 17. Of course. But people like, you know, no, I don't, I, I'm not the biggest fan of him. <laughs> so it's nothing to do with the fact that I don't like him, guys. He just laughed at me and told me I couldn't have a trial. That's not, that's, not, that's it. But because I was too young. Look at you now. Yeah. You carved out this, this space for like alternative women in a time when it was very much just out of the divas era where it was like the baby face blonde versus the brunette heel and you mm -hmm. came in and i'm not saying it was easy i know yeah. it fucking was oh no, you know easy. yeah oh i girl i know yeah. Yeah. yeah oh my gosh yeah but you started when you were 13 basically like you debuted yeah. in the wrestling world at 13 mm -hmm. and now you're 30, but 30 is like the new 20. That's right. Uh, That's right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, yes, girl. Yeah. But I don't want to get too ahead of myself. But if there was 30-year-old Soraya having a conversation with 13-year-old Soraya, what what would you say to her? Like it life any like the first thing that comes to mind, what would you say to little sweet baby you? Don't have sex on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, man, that, that oh, was a I mistake, love you. Huh? Yes. Yeah, so uh, 
I would tell her that though. I'd be like, I yeah. honestly, with all the stuff that happened to me, mm -hmm. like I don't regret anything. I really mm -hmm. don't, even though all that stuff is out there and you know, everything was very public with the struggles that I was going through. Just yeah. everything's out there. I'm so thankful that it happened to me because I was able to be strong enough to come out of it. But also yeah. I'm able to help people with it now. And so even back then I would tell, you know, 13 year old Surya, shit's gonna get real and you're gonna mm -hmm. hit rock bottom at, at a certain point. And at that point too, I tried to take my own life. Yeah. And so being, I'm just gonna, I wanna tell her that it's gonna be okay though and you're gonna climb out of it and you, you're gonna become a better person. And there is people that love you in the world. And try and tell her that social media isn't real. Because at one point I believed it was so real. Sure. But I look at it now like the more hated you are online, honestly, the more mean people are, it just means you're the, you're successful. Like the more that people are, are attacking you, it means you're doing something right. And so, yeah, I would just tell myself like, listen, it just means you're doing something right, sister. But yeah, Girl. you're going to be that is the truth like haters jobs are to hate and they're hating on you because mm -hmm. they can't be you love you right. or hate you they're contributing to your metrics so thank you very much you never see successful people punching down on somebody unless they deserve it unless they punched right. up first you know right. i'm always one like my dad always raised me to not start something for, but finish it so it's really hard for me not to reply to some people sure. and so when i do it's really frustrating at times because people will be like, you should know better. Like, no, just because I'm in this little spotlight of wrestling, you know what I mean? It doesn't mean I deserve to be attacked and uh, oh. abused online and bullied. That doesn't mean they have a right to do that. I don't care if you have three followers. I don't care if you have 300 followers. Like, I'm going to punch down on you if you sure. fucking come for me. You know, like, I'm, I'm, and I'm, I'm an advocate for that. Like, stand your ground. Like, don't let anybody make you feel inferior because there's a, there's a quote that I've loved forever and it just is so true and it's um don't listen to people that try to belittle your ambitions small people always do that but the real greats make you think that you too can become great so mm. that's why you never see the greats punching down on people because they want to see you succeed they yes. want to see you do what they can do and sometimes they want to see you do it even better but the small people that aren't doing what you're doing. They want to discredit and um, make you feel inferior. And it's really it's really sad how, yeah. how that works and how social media can give you that much access to a person. That's why I, I just delete it. Agree. I delete it off my phone. I'm like, that's enough social media for me for a week, you know, and I'll <laughs> let someone else run it for me. <laughs> social media is kind of everything in mm -hmm. our industry and in, in, in like celebrity period. Yeah. So I think, you know, there is that like compromise where it's you don't want to be too accessible, but the pendulum has swung so far the other way that these people can get, lose, you know, you can lose your career. So you might as well stand up for yourself because you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. So at least if you bite yeah. back, maybe they'll learn their lesson. Exactly. I mean, there's been times where I've snapped back on people. I've reposted their comments on my story because I'm just, and a lot of these people are like men or women mm -hmm. that have mm -hmm. kids of their own, daughters of their own. Yeah. And I'm just like, imagine how you would feel if some stranger on the internet was making your daughter, your son or whatever feel like that, like feel awful, like mm -hmm. they wouldn't like it. They wouldn't like oh, it. So why are they doing I it to us, agree. right? So I'll repost that shit. I'll put it on my story. I'll retweet it because I'm just like, no, you're going to feel what it's like yep. to be me for like a second of your life. Yeah. Right. So then when I retweet it, you do, you have people that, you know, go after them too. And you're like, this is how it feels like. It probably doesn't. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't make me better by doing that, but you know what? It makes me fucking feel better. I'm like, you're going to feel yeah. how I feel. With that dumb <laughs> comment that you just said to me, you're going to get a hundred of those too, because I get those every single day, you know? And so usually they just, they leave me alone after that, you know, or they apologize or like they'll write to me and be like, okay, can you please tell them to stop? I'm really sorry. I, mm -hmm. I just want the apology. I, I'm like, I don't hold a grudge. If you say something absolutely yeah. ridiculous to me and then, um, and you apologize, I'm like, done. Yeah, I, I don't care. You apologize. I don't care. Yeah. Well, that's you being the bigger person. Yeah, that's the bigger person part. I mean, that's true. I'm like, I'm yeah. gonna talk some shit back, but then yeah. you know, I'm gonna make you know that you were the one that was in the wrong there. Totally. I'm gonna give you hell for a day. <laughs> shit. Well deserved though. They deserved it. <laughs> <laughs>
you've done so much healing. You are so much stronger than the person you were five years ago, 10 years ago. Like I saw so much of myself in you when you were going through those oh. struggles with, oh. you know, our generation's different. Like think fuck mm -hmm. in my early twenties, there wasn't like people weren't posting leaked videos, you know, the things, mm. Yeah, the things that happen more often than not now, but I've had some really fucking messy relationships and I didn't, Ugh. I never yeah. wanted to be, I shouldn't say I would never wanted to be, I am not an angel. I am not looking to be an angel. I am looking mm -hmm. for living my life and living passionately and I've made some less than stellar choices in men. But the one thing that really felt like it was synchronicity between you and I is we grew up in the wrestling business. Our self-worth during our teenage years, our formative years mm -hmm. was set up in an industry where we were judged not necessarily by our talents, but how we looked. And exactly. Yeah. That has to have some long-standing effect on you aside from what your childhood trauma did to you when it comes to choosing men and being comfortable in these positions where these men make you feel less than. And I don't know if that's kind of what you went through and how you yeah. ended up in the relationships you did, but I was like, girl, I hear you, I see yeah. you, I am you, I'm just older. Yeah. yeah, I don't know how like I did it. Luckily now I've been in such a wonderful relationship for the past five years, finally someone that treats me with respect and right. supports me and, it's just, it's crazy because I'm like, how did I fall for past people? You know what I mean? Like you, oh, you feel yeah. like an idiot. You're like, why did I not see the signs of these things? But you are so wrapped up and so consumed by, you know, being a little younger, you know, and more yeah. easily influenced, I feel in a way too, that, you know, I just end up being with these fucking losers, dude. And I'm just like, Same how did girl. this happen? Like, how did it happen? Like I get so frustrated with myself because I of it, but. I, I never, you know, wanted stuff to be so in the spotlight, though. That's the frustrating part is everyone has an opinion about what you do, where you look, who you're talking to. Like, you know, if you've seen in a bar somewhere, like everybody has an opinion on, you know, it's so frustrating. Grown ups, again, like us grown ups so young, mm -hmm. the thing that used to bother me the most out of everything is the way they would look at my weight. Because oh, really? everyone has an opinion about you. Yeah. Because they would, they have been so, like lately as well, actually, they're turning it back around. They tell me that I'm looking a little bigger than usual. And I want to tell them, like, listen, I'm getting older. I have really bad endometriosis. My what? belly swells up. I get endo belly. And oh, so it yeah. swells up for a couple of weeks and it's really, really painful. And I try and hide it. That's why I can't wrestle, like, when my belly is like that. I can't wear wrestling gear. I'm too swollen. Oh, you know, gosh. so it gets, it's a really, painful experience for me and then people just think I'm fat and I'm just like you have no idea but everyone has an opinion people forget we're human like, and we're human we fluctuate it's okay being a woman especially we fluctuate a lot like yes. we can't eat a certain food because all of a sudden we just retain all, all the water you know like we get to a certain age where it's like we can't keep that weight off as as much as we want to you know mm -hmm. but when I was younger especially I lost a bunch of weight because I was doing drugs and drinking and stuff like I wasn't taking yeah. care of myself but with the drugs I wasn't eating at all so I got very skinny and then obviously that was talked about and then when I did get out of like this unhealthy relationship that I was in and then mm -hmm. also stepping and getting sober mm -hmm. not fully sober I was still having a few drinks but I put on a lot of weight I went up to 155 pounds which for okay. my guess for my like my structure my body you know yeah. it's a little bit too big but I felt great like I felt good like I, I'd been so skinny for so long and I was eating and I felt good yeah and I had a fan I was uh, coming out of a building and we were driving through the fans because you know how they all wait outside the arena sometimes it's really sweet but yeah. one of them uh I rolled the window down and was like tagging everyone signing stuff and he had pie faced me and said lose some fucking weight page and no. I was like oh my god and my friend Matt, his name's uh, Matt um, Calicchio. He's so sweet. He's been my friend. Every time I go to that that area on the East Coast, he's like a bodyguard. He's a huge guy, really sweet. Oh. And he jumped out of the car. And he's a big guy. Like, he's, yeah. he's uh, uh, like he's, he's got some uh, meat on him. You know what I mean? <laughs> He fucking is agile as shit. He jumps out of the car and he's fucking running after this guy. He couldn't catch him, but 
I just remember just being like, what the fuck? Like, I'm what finally healthy, happy, shit. putting on weight. And so I did this post where I'm like, someone just pie faced me and told me I was fat. So I'm eating this fucking burger because fuck you. Uh -huh. And then I get to a healthy weight. Everyone talks about it. And then I get my endo belly where I'm completely sober, but like, I have health issues. So I'm like, I can't help oh, it. And people girl. have an opinion. It's just, they're just so frustrating. As, as a female in this business, we cannot do anything right it feels like at times oh yeah and it like you shouldn't have to be like everyone just so you know i'm bloated because i have endometriosis like fuck you like yeah, exactly like mind your fucking ridiculous. business yeah you know? i have to defend my health issues fuckers but let's take some space and talk yeah. about everything that you have overcome like they always say uh -huh. like spirit god universe chooses its strongest warriors to go through the you know most horrific battles and girl you have done it and you are 30 you are so young and i think the biggest thing that must have come out of this is you have healed a relationship mm -hmm. with yourself you must have healed a lot of wounds how did you go through that process what was it the number one thing when it comes to addiction as well as just toxic relationships mm -hmm. is community and i didn't know that it's the, obviously the people you surround yourself with mm -hmm. and at that at that period of time people think if they offer them money to be out of it if they offer them opportunities it's like they're just going to take it and leave then no they have to want to as well right. they have to want to and that's like the strong part of it but it's it's community so you surround this person with positivity and people that want the best for you rather than people that's going to encourage you to do bad mm. they encourage you to be a better person instead so i got rid of a bunch of friends and like no offense to them they're nice people but they're not good for me and good for right. my journey and my healing they're just not good and then you know that relationship got rid of that very well like, get the fuck out of it loser. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, and then I found, you know, somebody like my my boyfriend, I was best friends with him for five years before I even started dating him. Really? So, yeah. We I so you know what's really sweet about Ronnie is is I met him like five years ago. And I actually met him when I was with an ex boyfriend five years oh. ago. And I already knew I was in trouble looking at him because <laughs> I've never like had this reaction to a person in my whole fucking life, right? And we meet oh. a lot of people. We meet a yes. ton of people every day, every yes. week, every time we go to work, every media thing. We meet so many people. We have celebrities yeah. come back to like, you know, we meet people. We meet, but I yeah. looked at them <laughs> from across this um, festival uh, lot area where all the bands were. And I was like, yeah. oh, who's that? Right. And my friend Bobby, <laughs> who owns Blackcraft Clothing. I was, I was with him. Bobby's your friend? I love black crap. Oh, I am like, that's he's all I wear friend. these days. Oh, I have oh to connect God. you guys. I have to connect you guys. Please. <gasps> yeah. Girl. Okay. He's, Continue your love story. My best friend. <laughs> yeah. No, he's, he's also best friends with my boyfriend, too. So it was like, oh. yeah, but I'll hook you up with everything, dude. Like, he's literally like my brother. I got you. But um, Girl. anything you want, <laughs> give me a list of all the stuff you want, and I'll get it sent to you. I'll, I'll get a partnership done with you guys. But um, Oh, my God. I'm dead. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I, I got love you. you, sister. I got you. Um, <laughs> oh, Bobby's God. an important part of my life too, by the way. Like he's helped me so incredibly. Like he never left my side really? even when I was like at my lowest, you know. But um, oh, yeah. So we need those me and people. Bobby's like talking, and then I was like, oh my God, who is that? <laughs> you know, I was like, wow, like who is this guy? And he was like, that's Ronnie Vikey. He used to sing and escape the fate, and now he has fallen yeah. in reverse. Not so like escape the fate. I was like, I used to listen to escape the fate, but. I didn't know what their faces looked like back then. I was young. I was like right. 15. You know, I was like, can you please introduce me? And as like we're walking across, like Ronnie and I make eye contact. And like we're both looking at each other. And I swear to God, there's fucking doves flying. <laughs> there's fucking smoke <laughs> machine. It's like he's walking in slow motion to me. Like I just died in the uh, in your arms tonight. Oh. It's like in the fucking <laughs> background. And I was just like, oh my God, he's so fucking handsome. And I just remember talking to him. And he just had like this very like intense like stare you know like he's just yeah. like overwhelmingly just like intense and it's like sex season me too and i was just like <laughs> like, I was I like love wow you. he's like <laughs> I'm on head boyfriend so i'm like trying not to look directly at him you know and i'm just oh like hi gosh. i'm Sreya. and then we became really good friends and like nothing happened like that and we just mm -hmm. we were just best friends he was there for me all the time and you know and then when i came uh back to wwe again after my my first surgery you know i yes. had uh i asked bobby 
and I was like, can you please connect me with Ronnie again? Like, I haven't spoken to him because the relationship that I was in, I was not allowed yeah. to speak to Ronnie, which is totally fine because that guy, this guy, man, woo. Yeah. Um, <laughs> probably is safe a bit, but yeah, no, uh, yeah, I had to just stay away from him or whatever, but I yeah. always had like this huge soft spot for him and I just thought he was so handsome, you know, and he apparently liked me too because, you know, we, we we text him back and forth and stuff, and you know I end up asking him like, "Do you want to?" You know, and then he was like, "No, I want to wait until you get back on your feet again." You know, and like really, like I don't want you to just go from one relationship to another. You know, he was okay. like, "I need time to heal." I know. I was just like, "Okay, Whoa. Ronnie, like, wow." Seriously? I know. And so he was like, "I want you to have time to heal and just be like, you know." be healthy he was like i just yeah and i was just like you're totally right so you know i had a period of time like i ended up seeing this other guy for a couple of months just to get into like a normal swing of things after having like such a toxic yeah. place i just wanted to have some fun for a little bit so i was with this other guy and then ronnie uh we ended up connecting again and then i was like oh i'm coming out to california because i'm coming out to do some hot topic stuff with black crap with bobby right yeah so yeah. I was like, let's, let's meet up, you know? So we ended up meeting up for a couple of days and then I went out there for my birthday and I, Taylor, no one's ever done this week before, right? I've never had a birthday over here where it's really been celebrated, right? Yeah. And so I walk into Ronnie's house and he had like decked out his whole house in balloons, right? Like uh, black and purple Aww. balloons because he saw my wrestling gear and he's not a big wrestling fan. He was just trying to find like what colors they were. He decked it all out. He got me a pair of Red Lou Louboutins, which I was just like, oh my god, <laughs> what the fuck? And wow. Then, and then he he went, go downstairs to my bathroom. So I was like, okay. And he was like, there's something <laughs> on there for you. And he had wrote a long poem for me. He had wrote one. And then oh. I was just like, oh my god, like this is crazy. Like, and he just made me feel fucking magical on my birthday. I was oh. like, I can't believe it. I was like, I'm fucking head over heels in love with this man. And then, so we were like a couple of weeks, like, you know, I hadn't seen him, but we were texting every day. And then eventually, you know, he was like, I want to be with you. And I was like, I want to be with you too. Like, you know, and so like, we were like uh, on his bed and he asked me to be his girlfriend, you know, like how it is in high school or middle school. Yeah. <laughs> and it was so romantic. And I was like, oh my God, I don't even know how, like, he was like, I don't know how to do this anymore. You know, he's going to be. <laughs> He's uh, going to be 40 in December, you know, but back then he was like, okay. like 35. So he was like, I don't know how to do this. And I was like, well, you fucking did it. And then we, he woke up in the morning and he was like, are you my girlfriend? And I was like, yeah, oh. you know, and <laughs> we've just been like best friends and in a relationship ever since. Like five years down the line, we're still together. People didn't think we were going to last. And I'm just so amazed by just how great we are. So, yeah, so I'm making that so long. No, but I love this. But community is so important. It can just change your mindset instantly when you're actually surrounded yeah. by incredibly powerful, in a way, like with that positivity, you know, when you're, when you're yeah. surrounded by people like that. So, yeah, oh, community. That. Community. Oh, man, if you have the right people around you, like you can never be unhappy for a day. Like it's just, it changes your life completely. And I'm so thankful for Bobby. I'm thankful for Ronnie, I'm thankful for, there's a couple of friends, Raquel and Joey, I have a handful of my group that I love, and they've mm. just been there with me ever since the bloody beginning, you know? Well, and they say your vibe attracts your tribe, so that shows how much work you did inside, because that's what you were putting out into the universe, and these are the people you attracted. You attracted Ronnie, like, let's not get it yeah. twisted here. Oh, yeah, I definitely, I'll take that. I definitely <laughs> attracted him, and, he, and uh, we both wanted to get sober together, so he helped me. Yeah, off drinking. I stopped vaping. I end up going to the gym and eating healthy. And he's Look just such you. a good influence. On me. So he's a fucking dreamboat. I'm like, oh. I fucking love you, dude. Jesus. Can, can, can you um clone clone Ronnie for me? Like, oh or, yeah, or I got you. That's, <laughs> yeah, you know what? Like, let's see. What are these bandmates are single? They're all very sweet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I've been sober over a year now. I feel. Congratulations. Oh, thank you, and you as well. And. You know, people ask me from time to time, like, why don't you drink? Like, what's the deal? And my honest answer, it took me almost a year and a half to get the answer, but I just really feel like I'm not running from anything anymore. And, and it's more myself. Uh, like, ooh, I've got, I got nothing. Chills. <laughs> ooh, That's, I got chills. I, it's yeah. truly nothing good in my life ever happened when I was drinking, ever. Preach, yeah. <laughs>
Yes. Oh. I never thought I could be a sober person. And it's not even like I was in a binge. Well, I could binge drink, but it was more just like consistency. And when you're in mm-hmm. this line of work, you don't have normal hours. You don't hang around normal people. Mm-hmm. So drinking culture is different. Plus, I've been a firefighter for 10 years. Drinking culture is different with that. It's just more mm-hmm. acceptable. And it shouldn't be as acceptable as we make it. Having two, three glasses of wine, a bottle of wine every day is not normal, is not good no, for you. It's not normal. And I, I said this before, I was like, it's so strange that alcohol is the only drug where people are just like, why don't you do it? I I'm know. like, why do you do it? It's so you know, rude. Like, like, I know. It's a rude and question. Like, it is a rude question. Like, you don't drink? Like, no, bitch, I don't fucking drink. Like, it's, it's okay if I don't drink. Like, I feel great. I don't wake yeah. up with a hangover. Like, I'm yeah. not, you know, I don't feel like shit. Like, I don't need it. If you don't need it, you don't need mm-hmm. it. And people shouldn't judge you for not wanting to you know have that drug in your body and again I don't judge anybody that wants to do it like if my friends and stuff they want to have like a glass here and there that's on them I don't care like do your thing like I'm not judging you for it but why do people judge us for being sober it's crazy exactly it is bizarre and but I think too when I used to drink and I saw sober people I, I would project my like it, I would be projecting on them, like, why don't you drink, loser? And now that I'm on the other side like, of it, yeah. You're like, hey, you shut your mouth. And you're like, wait, I did that before. Yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> now you think about it, you're like, oh, fuck, you know. <laughs> but I was not well. I was so unhealed. I was so triggered all the time. And I was just self-medicating. Yeah. And I was running from the relationship that I refused to heal with myself. It, I wasn't, mm. I couldn't do it. And yeah. Like you, you you gave me chills when you said it. You are thankful for your rock bottom. I am so Mm -hmm. thankful for my rock bottoms because I am truly the happiest, most content I've ever been in my life. And I wouldn't get there if it wasn't for all the shit I've been through. Exactly. That I just feel like the women and men, of course, I'm not, you know, but people who have been through that and have really seen the depths of what the bottom looks like and came out as strong, like, I'm just so, like you telling your story, I'm so empowered by that. Like, that's so fucking cool that you did that. And I'm like, it makes me sad that you went through what you had to go through. But honestly, like, it made us the person that we are right now. Absolutely. And I'm like, so thankful for that. Like, look at you, you're back to an impact. You get to be friends with my Naomi or t- Trinity. I love oh her my so much. Girl, like, she, she is so her? good. She is so good. Yes. Oh man, Trin is so positive right i've never seen her talk shit about one person you know how some people can vent yeah she won't even do that she doesn't do it she's just one of those people that will like listen to you but like she's not like she just doesn't have a bad bone in her body like she doesn't have a negative bone in her body she's so positive and just so sweet and just i'm so jealous that you guys get to be with her a lot (laughs) man because she is truly the best oh i love that and that is all i've ever heard about her and that is such an accomplishment Mm -hmm. in this industry like Oh, yeah. No one has a single thing to say to you except she's wonderful. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love that. Mark. Like, everyone has something to say, you know, but it's crazy yeah. when you're like that person. It's like uh, Renee. I always say the same thing about Renee uh, Paquette. Yes. She's another one of those people who's just like, I mean, she'll shoot the shit. She'll talk some shit, but hers is like so <laughs> not malicious, you know? Like, right. that's why everyone loves her. So her and Trin are definitely the good seats. I feel like, have you met Renee? I haven't, but we're Canadian sisters. I feel like we just keep missing yeah. each other. It's going to happen. It's going to uh, happen. You'll love her. <laughs> you guys will get along so well. Like She's great. You guys uh, should do like a little podcast mix up with each other. I would love to. I just, yeah. I, I need the Soraya connection. I need the Soraya connection. I'll do it. I'll connect you guys. <laughs> After this, I'll hit you guys up. Yeah. Oh, you're the best. Okay. Yeah. I want to know some tea about you and Ronnie because you guys have an amazing relationship. You're yeah. both massive celebrities in your fields. I just want to say <clears throat> one of you has 6 million followers. The other has 2 million followers. <laughs> you know what's crazy though with the followers though? I have more followers, but yes. his engagement, he has a lot more women and women are very Ooh. hardcore fans. Let me tell Interesting. you. So even though like I have more <laughs> followers, his engagement is kind of like pretty much up there with mine. Like just because oh, the women funny. in there like really breaks that shit up. Like everything he posts, they're like... <laughs> And let me tell you, they fucking hate me too. Well, not all of them. Oh, I bet. But I'm like, man, I they bet. can get pretty, uh, pretty crazy. That's for sure. Pretty rare, rare. Yeah. Oh man, <laughs> I, I stole them, man. I'm like, I've been with them for five years, bitch. Get over it. 
you have to take that as a compliment though mm-hmm. like if i had a man that girls were like hating on me for i'd be like oh thank you <laughs> yeah no no Luckily, tell me I'm more not those girls that really care like about these no, fans or anything like because i'm used to it with the guy fans that i have like some of them could be exactly. really mean to ronnie you know and so I'm just like, hey, it comes with the territory of us being in a relationship. But it's, of course. Uh, it just makes us laugh because Ronnie will literally see these messages and, like, show me them, you know, and I'll show him <laughs> my messages. Like, I had a group <laughs> chat with uh, Bobby, actually. But there's me, Bobby, and Ronnie in a group chat. And we yeah. were talking about the the DMs that I get, like, the requested DMs on Instagram. And there was a guy yeah. that straightened his pubes and sent me a dick pic. And <laughs> straightened his pubes. It was <laughs> crazy That's i was like what disgusting. the fuck and i screenshot it and sent it to them and they were like what the fuck is wrong with him i'm like i don't know i don't know why these men think that's the way forward no one not not any woman likes a dick pic and if they say that they're no. lying to you no one they're no, lying no women are like "Ooh, nice they're like Ugh, what the fuck dude you that's know I mean? the quickest way for me to lose interest in someone and yeah, just the uns- no, it's aggressive. It's not good looking. And no. you certainly don't want to see it in a photo. No, it's not. <laughs> You're just like, oh, God, no thanks. I'm glad Ronnie was never like, never like that person. You know what I mean? But also, just the amount of fans that do it. You're just like, why? Oh, yeah. No, no one likes that. Fans, men in general, if you're trying to find, like, court a woman, do not send her a picture of your ween. No one cares about it. <laughs> agreed and always yeah. use ween we love a ween but yeah. we don't want to see a photo of it <laughs> ween it is uh okay so who's the bigger diva overall it depends what it is i would say mm. i'm more laid back than ronnie but he's also okay. a crazy creative artist like okay, he, so we're gonna go diva with Ronnie then. Yeah, let's do more <laughs> Ronnie than, than me. Yeah. <laughs> Who has more skincare products? Ronnie. Actually, no, no, no. Actually, really? I do. He steals my stuff. Okay, so that's, that's probably equal. Because if you yeah. didn't have any, would he be buying his own, or he would just use a bar of soap like a normal man? He wouldn't buy his own. <laughs> <laughs> He was just my. He, he tried to get one of my face masks yesterday, but I ran out, so I had to order it. <laughs> Who has more shoes? Ronnie. One hundred. Yeah, yeah, by a lot. He's he's a sneaker collector. Okay. Yeah. So, it's so a he thing. has a ton of shoes. My gosh. Yeah. I I just we just moved house and the I was I was putting out all our closet because I arrange our closets. Okay. And I was like, I was like, this isn't all of your shoes. And he thinks it is. I'm like, no, it's not. You have so many more shoes. And like, uh, they were in the garage, like boxes and boxes of them. I was like, how do you not know how many shoes you have? But women, we know everything. Women know everything. And we I do. love that you organize the closet because that's like a real, that's a real thing with me. Like, I, I need to know where all my shit is. I have to know where everything is. <laughs> Who's the better cook? Me. Well, right. So Ronnie does, like, he was in prison, right? And he learned prison okay. food. So the prison food he cooks to me is delicious. But no, I am the best. <laughs> what constitutes as prison food? Like he ramen? Makes, yeah, like he makes this like special ramen with like fucking, um, what's it called? The the the, the, the crunchy Cheez-Its and stuff. Like he makes, okay. he's crazy with this with these food, but he makes, it's delicious. Like, let me tell you, tell you, you have How to come to health one day and you have to. Oh, I would love to. Yeah. Let him cook you some prison ramen. <laughs> How long was Ronnie in prison? Uh, two and a half years. Okay, so he really had to indulge in yeah. in, in prison well, cooking. The, the reason why I went in there, people call him a murderer. He's not a murderer, by the way. So basically, okay. him and his friends got in this, um, like, two friend groups got in an argument. And they were like, let's meet out in the desert and let's duke it out, right? So okay. there was only four with Ronnie, but there was, like, eight or nine with the other group, right? Oh. And so as soon as they got there, one of the guys in the other group pulled out a gun and started shooting at Ronnie in that. So oh. Ronnie's friends went to the car because he had a gun in the car, but didn't have it out with them. He, he grabbed it. And like this, uh, up, the guy with the gun is on top of his friend and he's like trying to shoot at him, trying to shoot at him. And then his, his friend comes along and shoots the guy. Right. And then shoots another guy to like, you know, is self-defense. Right. Sure. Sure. No one went to jail, right? No one actually went to jail because even people on the other side were like, one one person died. A, a guy died. Okay. The guy okay. that shot the gun died. 
basically like uh, you know the police came along and then ronnie's side was just like this guy came out with a gun and then the people on the other side was like yeah the guy our friend started shooting at them and that's why what happened so you know they got self-defense no one went to jail ronnie didn't shoot the gun ronnie went to jail because he had brass knuckles in his pocket and it was a misdemeanor charge in in vegas right oh nevada nevada, nevada. Yeah. yeah and so um he went to prison a high security prison for two and a half years and then escaped the fate like dumped him you know and then um oh, he wow. made a whole album while he was in prison which was the first album he dropped as soon as he came out of prison and was in full in reverse like he created a band and made a whole fucking album and it was successful wow. as fuck but like, you know he said that he made it by just yeah. like tapping on his knees like the sound and stuff because ronnie does wow. all the lyrics he does all the instruments in the song he writes everything every single bit that's in the song he writes yeah. it all which is like the most impressive fucking thing ever and it's a great comeback story i mean he went to jail people oh, think yeah. for he murdered somebody and then he came back stronger and got bigger and now he's playing in in huge arenas you know headlining wow. them that's incredible. That truly is like talking about hitting rock bottom. Yeah, like, that's I, yeah. You he got sober is... in there too. He was on heroin, wow. and he got completely sober. He's he's thankful for prison because it got him sober. Wow. Yeah. And and like that's that kind of mindset too, where it's like, okay, this this is where I am. All my life choices yeah. have led up to to this, and yeah. you can either be part of the system and then you're in and out for the rest of your life, or you do what Ronnie's done and he's completely used it as like a, re yeah. a death and rebirth. So that's and that yeah. makes so much sense how you two have now come together, like what you've both yeah. been through. You're the both we've both been rock bottom and yeah. we both came out of it and became stronger, which is awesome. And we we I, we like to do it together too. Like Aww. you know, when I wasn't being used in uh, WWE, you know, during the pandemic, and yeah. I was sitting at home for fucking years. You know, it was like really frustrating. He was like, "Why don't you appear in my music video?" So. There's I'm Not a Vampire Revamped, which is yeah. a song that he redone from like 10 years ago. He made it into a piano, you know, ballad. Okay. Yeah. And it's beautiful. And so everyone who's listening, give it a watch because it is a beautiful video. But yeah, yeah. he like is like, you should start doing this. You should start doing Twitch. You should start doing this. He was like always encouraging me to do stuff. Wow. So I'm not okay. just like feeling sorry for myself on the couch, yeah. you know? <laughs> well, Ronnie sounds great. He sounds like he's your great. partner, not just your boyfriend. He's my twin flame. Oh, you know, we love, we love hate a twin flame, don't we? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you didn't think you were ever going to come back to wrestling again. You had mm -mm. a life altering, life changing injury. Tell me about being injured and coming back to wrestling. Were you terrified? Were you excited? Like how, how did that m whole mental thing go for you? Yeah, so I got, again, I got told, yeah, never going to wrestle again, yeah. not going to happen. If I wrestle, I was going to be paralyzed, you know, because there was no fluid around my spinal cord and you need that fluid to protect your spine, right? So there was there was nothing there and I was completely fucked. So I ended up getting like a team together. I have a really good manager, Meech Golden. He's fantastic, you know, um, and with UTA, like I have a great community and great people that are like helping me my career wise. So I don't feel like a complete bum, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it started going really well, and I was really happy. And then, you know, me and WWE parted ways. Yeah. And then I get a call from Hunter being like, what happened? I was, and then he was like, did you want to leave, or did they ask you to leave? And I was like, it's surprising that you don't know about this. But no, yeah. they, you know, Vince didn't want to renew my contract, right? Okay. He wanted me to come back there to potentially be a GM. But then I get a call from Jericho, and then John Moxley was calling me, and of course Renee's calling me. Yeah. <laughs> Britt Baker's calling me, and then I was like, listen, if Tony wants me there, he'll give me a call, right? Mm -hmm. So then within like two days, like Tony had called me and was just like, you can do whatever you want here. Like, we just want you here. And I was like, great. That sounds fantastic. Like, <laughs> sounds like a dream, yeah. right? Yeah. But I freedom to do whatever I wanted like fuck yeah and so <laughs> I end up going obviously to AEW and again had no idea if I was even going to wrestle or not or do anything and Tony brought it up to me he was just like what's the deal with your neck and I was like uh well actually I'm feeling like really good my neck feels great I've had zero issues with it for a couple of years now you yeah. know and so I was like I'd be interested to know what it looks like you know sure. how, how it's healing and he was just like let's do it let's see what your neck looks like right 
And so again, I have no idea what my job is. They just signed a contract, <laughs> not figuring out like what the hell I was going to end up doing. It was just awesome that they brought me in, you know, like maybe I was going to be like a general manager type there, maybe a producer, like something. I was going to be doing something there, but yeah. I don't know what. Definitely not wrestling. That's by thought. No way, right. right? Of course. So I was I was like, you know what? Like, I, I, I'm very intrigued. So um, Halloween, you know, and if I go back to my doctor that I usually go to, he's great, but he's just going to be like, no, because he wanted me to stop after my next surgery, right? Sure. After my first one. And so I was like, oh, I'll go to, you know, Dr. Watkins. And Dr. Watkins, like, has huge celebrities on his roster of neck, you know, roster of necks that he has, right? Yeah. <laughs> as well as, like, NBA players and hockey players and NFL players. Like, he has this huge fucking roster of people that, you know, if he's going to do, if he's going to say something bad, it just ruins his credibility completely, right? Sure. Yeah, he, he he's located in Marina Del Rey, which is also so beautiful. I was like, wow, this place is so fancy. <laughs> so he was like, oh, let me, let's do um, an x-ray. And so we did the x-rays and he was like, your neck looks good. But he was like, but we have to obviously do MRIs and CT scans. Right. And again, this is on Halloween last year, right? So uh, Ronnie was there with me, bless his heart too, like for all and. <laughs> And uh, again, I wasn't expecting it to be like my neck to be great, but he looked at everything and he was just like, your neck's fine. Like it's healed great. The surgical wow. nails are like perfect. They're completely fused. He was just like, and you have all that fluid around your spine. And I was just like, so does that mean I can wrestle? He was just like, I mean, yeah. He, I was like, okay. So like, wow. if I get kicked there, you know, he was just like, you're not going to be paralyzed. He was just like, you have all that fluid there to protect it. And I was just like, oh my God. Like and I just like started <laughs> crying. I was like, oh my God. Oh. I was like, so like overwhelmed. And like, I call like my mum and dad and I have like this little screenshot of our FaceTime and I'm like crying my eyes out and I text, you know, Mercedes because I didn't want her to feel bad anymore. You know, she was feeling bad even though I would tell her constantly like it's wrestling, it happens, you know. You feel guilty about ending someone's career potentially, right? Absolutely. And so like I text her to be like, guess what, bitch, you know, (laughs) I'm back and she was happy and then, you know, it was just. I would text Tony and I took the discs to work with me so they can see it for themselves too. Of so they know I'm not bullshit and whatever. <laughs> and I was just like, I can't fucking believe it. And then, you know, I had that first match where I was like, how the fuck did I wrestle for so long? How am I so blown up? This is fucking crazy. I was like 10 minutes in, I'm fucking dying. Like, I'm like, what the fuck is this? Why did I do this? I was like, no way. And I was like, this is hard. <laughs> I was like, yeah, this shit is hard. It's difficult. I'm like, man, because well, well, we've been doing it for so many years, our yeah. bodies build this giant callus, right? Totally. So, like, we heal a lot quicker. Our body adapts, you know. Yeah. But then once you haven't done it for, like, <laughs> even just a couple of weeks or a couple of months, you know, yeah. your body heals very quickly. And so yep. just taking that bump and hitting those ropes and being like, oh, fuck, this is crazy. You have to get back in the fucking swing of things again. So we did it, and I'm wrestling, which is awesome. And then I said... People always complain, being like, she doesn't wrestle too much. I'm like, because I don't fucking want to. Yeah. Listen, I can, you get to a point in your time where, like, you know, when you first start, people are like, you have only so many bumps on your bump card, right? You don't yep. have to bump all the time. You don't have to do all these crazy things. And back then, we don't believe it, right? We Correct. don't. We like, we love to take bumps. We love to do all these crazy things. Like, no, mm-hmm. bitch, I'm not trying to do that anymore. Like, I understand now why they said that. I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm trying to preserve what I have left in the tank here, you, you know, preach. and, uh, you know, I want to take care of myself. I'm not trying to rush back into things. I rushed back the last time and ended up hurting my neck within a couple of months. You know, right. I'm like, I just want to take it easy and wrestle who I want to wrestle. And, you know, and Tony's really receptive to that. He's understanding. Good. He was like, we'll go as like slow or as fast as you want to go. Like it's up to you or on your time. And I appreciate that from him. Yeah. That's amazing. And I'm a girl. I'm so proud of you. Thanks. And I'm so excited you're back for like a million reasons. And it's so good seeing you in your faction because I feel like that is the most authentic version of you. And it comes through to the fans. Thank like, you. I yes. have so much fun. People talk so much shit. You know how they are. They constantly <laughs> oh, talk yeah. so shit. And I, we've got to the stage, like me, Tony, and Ruby, because they are so sweet. Oh my God. I love working with oh, them. Oh, good. But I get to a point with them. Where, like, with the fans online, I'm like, I don't care what you're saying. We're having so much fun. Like, I love it. I'm having a great time. Like, I'm having a field day doing this, right? You get to a point in your career, too, where you just stop caring what people think. And that's so, I love that feeling. 
And that's when you start like really once having you get, fun and that comes yeah. through. Yeah. yeah, and you have a gimmick that you really enjoy, like character stuff, your storyline you're having a good time with, like you can really tell. Like we're having a ball. We love it. We're yeah. like, careful, talk shit. We're bad guys. Fucking talk shit all you want. <laughs> Isn't it the best? Yeah. I love it. Oh, fantastic. It's fantastic. Sky blue all locked up by Saran. I want to wrap this up with my top 10 tailor-made questions. It's yeah. not a speed round, but I want to hear all your all your goodness. So have you ever thought about what your funeral song would be or what your funeral would look like? Oh, man. Okay. So in England, funerals aren't super sad, right? They're sad. Okay. Like the first initial you walk the coffin in. But afterwards, the wake, everyone has to get drunk and have a good time. Right. Yeah. So at my funeral, I'm hoping that I was very old. And by the time I was old, that's when I'd start drinking and doing drugs again because I'm already old, you know? <laughs> so I go out live your life. Yeah. Right. Once I love that. Old, that's it. That's, that's the time. But um, I love friends. So okay. I would want, I'll be there for you. I love that so much. And then love it. one of Ronnie's songs, if not, then the office theme song to make everybody laugh. But yeah. <laughs> that's. Perfect. I said I my stripper that. song would be the office theme song if I was a stripper. <laughs> <laughs> You're my kind of sexy. I love it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> what is your drink of choice? Because we sober bitches now. Oh, I love a good vitamin water zero, an orange one. It tastes like mm-hmm. U- uh, UK squash. I love it. So that or a fresca, a good refreshing fresca. <sighs> love a fresca. Yeah. Can't drink too many of them. I'm getting old. Gives me indigestion. Like burns. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, the freaking uh, oh! Don't even start with the um, not indigestion, but it's uh, acid reflux. Acid reflux. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, that's that. what it is. Yeah, Ugh. Field day. With Aging that is hard. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, do you have a super secret natural power? Like, I feel like I can read somebody within a minute or two. Oh yeah, I feel like that too. I feel like that comes with being around so many people since a young age. Though I feel like we're very similar, like that. Like I yes. tell people all the time, like. I know how that person is just by looking at that person. And so yeah. Ronnie's the same way. It's like a like an empath kind of thing. But I feel like if you've been through a lot of trauma and you've been through a lot of stuff, you're kind of wise to a lot of things. So it's easy for us to read people. So yeah, yeah. I feel like 100% like that too. What else is my secret power? Oh, the love I have for my dogs. Oh, <laughs> I love animals more than people. They're my babies. That's a be- I was just talking to Mercedes about her dog. She- I-, I was like, what do you miss? Like, what what are you looking forward to? Like, once you leave here? Because she was there supporting Trinity. She's like, I just I just want to see my dog. And I'm like, don't you have a husband? <laughs> but she's like, I miss my dog. Yeah, I think, oh, dogs you know. are the main, yeah, exactly. My boyfriend says it all the time, too. He'll, like, be on tour and be like, I miss Aussie and Lobster. <laughs> I'm like, okay, oh. bitch, fuck, fuck, fuck. <laughs> I'll just go fuck myself. Yeah, right. Don't worry about me. it. <laughs> okay. Nip slip, incontinence, sharding. What was your most embarrassing moment in the ring? Uh, oh, probably. Yeah. So I just came back from the first surgery that I had. And, you know, my tapes were already on the fucking internet. So people were already seen my vagina. But here we go. Like, <laughs> I, w- I was wrestling Mercedes. And, and yeah. my, my shorts ripped in the crotch and Mickey was actually on the side of the ring too. So I'm looking at her and I'm just like, like, well, actually I look at um, Mandy and Sonia first and I'm like, can you see my underwear? And it's like the first time they're really up on the road. So they don't know if they can communicate with me side of ring. You know how we get more comfortable okay. talk, talking to each other, but they're just like, totally. they're like not wanting to say a word. And I'm like, fuck, so I just roll over to fucking Mickey. And then she was just, I was like, is, uh, can you see my underwear? She was like, oh, yeah, baby, they're red. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> I was like, okay. So I had to try and, like, keep my crotch off of TV, right? And then oh I come gosh. back. And this, again, it's my first match back. And I go up to uh, Vince. And I'm like, thank you so much. And he was like, were you blown up out there? I was like, no, Vince. My, my shorts had split in the crotch. And I just wanted for once for my vagina not to be on the fucking internet, right? <laughs> And so he just started fucking laughing, and I was like, I wasn't blown up. I was I was about to flash the fucking children in the front row. I have to try and keep that. Thing I love wrapped. it. That's such a man response too. Like, what were you doing out oh, there? You, you exhausted you or something? Just like, no, bitch. I'm trying to save your fucking PG thirteen show. Oh, a fucking PG show actually. It's not even PG thirteen. PG, yeah. 
<laughs> I love you. I love you. I really do. And also, that was a very good Mickey impression. Yeah, yeah, baby. I can see yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby. I love her so much, man. Oh. Oh, I, oh, she's such a I, she's such a unicorn. She like she's just she one of the happiest, most positive people. Oh, golden retriever energy. I love her. Golden retriever energy. Mm -hmm. Who is like your biggest ally in wrestling? Who's your like BFF forever girl guy? Renee. Renee, that's my girl. Renee. I absolutely adore. If we're in character, Tony and Ruby, but out of character, of it's course. Renee. Like. She is the oh. one that helped me, like, persuaded me a little bit more to go to AEW just because she was there as well. Oh, but that's nice. She's been with me from, like, fucking day one, dude, for, like, the last 11 years. She's just been, you know, my confidant and best friend. That. And I'll text her every single day, you know. Uh, she's just uh, – she's the, she's the best. She's the she's the blondie to my Joan Jett, <laughs> the Wayne Aww. to my God. She is awesome. Oh, I love that so much. Yeah. Who is your favorite band or artist? Fallen in reverse, Whee! baby. I have to put them over. You know, yeah, I have to. Because I honestly, generally, I really love Ronnie's music. Like everything Do he puts you? out, all his newest stuff, I really enjoy. I absolutely adore. I'll be on the side of the stage and I'll be losing my shit. So the point he'll come back and he's like, You have to calm down. And I'm just like, No. You know, I'm like, Fucking, I'm screaming and have a good time. So I love that. I love, yeah, I love Ronnie's music so much. It's just so good. Like, and yeah, I'm biased too. I loved it before oh, I did. Okay, that's fair. Because you did say that. That came before yeah. him. Yeah. Now, what about your Guilty yeah. Indulgence band? Or artist? Let's see. Well, I don't know if it's guilty or not, but I, I love listening to 80s music. Like, 80s is my favorite. Oh. 80s rock music. So even though, like, you know... We had a thing with like the lead singer of Skid Row. He's such a fucking deep guy. <laughs> I still love their music, separate the art from the artist, you know? And I just, I love Skid Row. I love, I just love any kind of 80s music. I fucking love it. And Eminem, I love it. Eminem, okay, that's a good, okay, I love it. Not a guilty indulgence. Yeah, he's like your sing-along music. No, I, I, I don't really have any guilty, because I'm, I used to listen to music all the time and now I, I don't, I don't have time to listen to music. Yeah. So, you know, and even when uh, I, I only listen to Ronnie's, like, while, while he's making the song, while he's, like, you know, I'm constantly just listening to his stuff. Right. So I just, I don't have time for anything else. That's, I wish I did, because I love that's music. That's more than fair. That's more than fair. Yeah. Okay. Favorite movie? Ooh, Drop Dead Fred or Labyrinth. Oh, those are really good ones. Those yeah, are really I love good those. Ones. Ah. And where can all our listeners find you? Social media, all your things. It's Soraya across the board. You'll find Soraya on Twitter, Soraya on Instagram, Soraya on TikTok. It's Soraya official on Twitch. I haven't been on there in a couple of months because I've been super busy, but I'll be back <laughs> to streaming again for this Sunday because I usually stream with uh, Thea Zelina Vega from WWE, who's also one of my best ah, friends. Love, love her. Zelina. And yes, and my friend uh, Raquel that I spoke about earlier, okay. she. A lot. She's been my friend for the last 10 years outside of wrestling. She has no clue about wrestling still, and I love, I love that. that. You need that. Love you it. need those so, friends. Yeah. Yeah, so we usually have, like, Sister Sundays where we'll all stream and play video games together. That's really sweet. Okay, last one. Finish mm -hmm. this lyric. Because <clears throat> I'm Slim Shady. Yes, I'm the real Shady. Are you ever Slim Shady? Is it just the mud Shady? So what? The real Slim Shady. Please stand, stand up. up. Please stand <laughs> up. <Yay! laughs> Thank you, girl. Thank you. Thank you, sister. I love you. Love you, sis. You all have been with me on this incredible journey over the past two years. <laughs> I'm terrible but with time because I truly feel like I've lived multiple lives. And the theme of today is for better or for worse. Uh, but for better or for worse, I'd like to think that Saray and I have a connection based on the challenges we've had endured in our lives and not the type of challenges that have been similar, but how we've been able to overcome and succeed in our own ways, in our chosen fields. And I'm just truly so proud of her. And I hope you all enjoyed that little interaction that we had because that was really our first moment hanging out and you got to experience it with us. And 
If you guys didn't know, you wouldn't be able to experience this podcast if it wasn't for, that's right, my badass punk rock girl band, the Wild On Team, my queen, my right-hand woman, my producer and editor, the woman that helps me creatively hone all the things of the bouncing balls in my head and her head and together. She's my producer and editor, Rochelle Duras, and our marketing specialist, Princess Queen, the things of all the internets that I don't know how to use, Madison Golshani. And until next week, keep calm and wild on. Or is it stay calm and wild on? I don't even care anymore. Blessed be. Blessed be.